Thank you, Giacomo, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm showing you, as Giacomo told you already, the first results of the new ISTAR biometer. And while we're speaking, my, my colleagues are actually measuring patients at the moment to perform the study. So it's a really, really fresh data, which I'm going to show you. My financial disclosures, unless, uh, except for my Huck Stride involvement, are not relevant for this talk. Biometry, the LENSTAR is actually a time domain biometer. We, we never called it uh, an OCT because we, we didn't know it. the imaging qualities of, of the OCT at the time in the, in the mid-90s mid when we started with OCT biometry. So as we have learned from our retinal colleagues that the laser have improved, they, they went from time domain to, um, to, to swept source finally um, with, with higher image quality. We, we realized that uh, in, in our segment, in our anterior segment, OCT, we can use this. We, we used retinal machines, we adapted them, we put optics on top of them, but we haven't adapted it for the biometers. Just only recently, a few companies have adapted into swept source biometry. Um, there are, at the moment, three machines available. Uh, there's another one, a fourth machine, which is not a biometer. They have no axle length, but it's it's a machine I really like. And there's even now the first publication just recently came out in GSCRS uh, last month comparing two of these new swept source biometers. So it, it has been a couple of years already that the Hark Stride company has been into developing a swept source OCT biometer. And, and I'm very proud to present you now the data which we have measured so far. What does this machine do? And it is uh, a brand new laser source which is in there, so you have all the advantages of, of imaging the anterior segment, which will help you to find these special cases. You, you'll see the topographies I'll show you later. It, it takes, as, as you would expect, a high resolution picture, so photographies are taken as well. If you have image guided systems uh, during surgery, we've seen toracal IOLs and, and some systems which we are using. So this, it's, it's a platform which can be used for, for these. It, it has a standard keratometry involved as well, so it does SIM case on the OCT, uh, on, on the swept source OCT, as well as measures pure keratometry. And what is the beauty about the machine is really it is absolutely automated for the patient and for, for the user. Um, the graphic user interface is, is really practical and self-explanatory. It's fast and, and hence that's, that's what I think has been also the, the big advantage of the LENSTAR and, and finally I hope it will make the ISTAR machine you, you would like. Um, showing you the images you can see here. Um, that's, that's your anterior segment, so when you, when you measure the patient, you get a, a horizontal and a vertical image straight away um, during measurement as well, and you see actually what's happening. You can look at the images later on. You have the whole anterior cornea, you have the angle, you see the iris, you see the lens. Be aware that even though you see the retina, it's, you won't see uh, a macular or fovular depression. So it's, it's really an anterior segment device which measures biometry, axial lengths, but it's not a retinal imaging device. So this, this image is, is not showing you the true image of, of the retina or of the foveola. It's, it's just the, the final step at the end of the retina. Obviously, we, we've taken special cases. Um, you, you see here that's, that's a pseudophagic IOL. You clearly see the, the IOL. Even what surprises me sometimes, we quite get through to the iris, and you can see even behind the iris, the IOL uh, without dilation. Uh, it's not in all cases. I haven't found out yet why we tr were talking, discussing it with the technicians, but you can quite um, see outside behind the iris sometimes, not in all cases. You have intact in the cornea, you, you have phagic IOLs, um, here you, you see vitreous opacities behind it, you see a Fuchs dystrophy, a decompensated cornea here, um, clearly with, with the delin and, and like the decompensation thicker cornea, and, and even here like uh, DMAG obviously you can't distinguish, but these eggs you can <coughs> see nicely. So the OCT imaging quality is what you would expect for an anterior OCT imaging device, you, you'll find in this device. 
As we've heard, we want to measure not only the anterior topography, but also the posterior topographies. And, and obviously, you, you get all this with this device measured by the OCT uh, in, in, in special patterns, very quick, very fast. Um, it's, it's automated. The patient just sits there. No, nothing is moving in front of the patient. It has two outlets and, and quickly measures, captures actually all the curvature maps you're expecting. I just for this talk, Last week had a, a patient with a corneal ectasia, um, and, and you see here the printout. It's it's for study only. That's why it has this this graph over. But you you, you see this is this is the I star. This is the Kaisia, which which I like and use a lot as well. And this is the the classical Pentacam. Um, everything the same what you would expect. Um, you can adapt also with drop down menus the the topography as as you would like them and set it out, um, customize it as you would like told you, it takes an image, it takes pictures, uh, high quality pictures, color pictures and, and red free, black and white. Uh, it measures white to white, it measures the pupil. Uh, it takes keratometries, true keratometries with, with 16 diodes and, and that's, that's something it takes within milliseconds. So everything is automated, you don't have to click more than once and the machine does the rest for both eyes. That's the setup of the actual ongoing study. We have so far recruited 16 eyes. Uh, haven't measured them all. As I said to you, that while we're talking, our my colleagues are actually measuring the, the patients. So I'm going to show you the first 35 eyes, um, just because the rest hasn't been measured yet, but recruited. What would you do? We, you see, this is our study setup. We we have dedicated devices. We don't actually use the clinical devices which we use because it's interfering. Uh, in our patient flow, so we have a, a study room where the patient comes in and actually is being measured three times on each device. It's, it's the, the eye star, the pentacam, the lens star, and the atlas. So the patient rotates around and we actually flip the machinery so it's not always the same uh, uh, row and, and the measurements are actually random. Uh, so you cannot say that there is a bias on, on, on the measurement row, how we go around with the, with the patient measurement. But that's just statistical details. Um, what did we find out? If you compare axial length between the eye star, the new device, the whole length measurement, and the gold standard, also Hawkstride's lens star, it, it shows you here in the blunt uh, plot. It actually is, is almost the same. Clinically, probably not, not a big relevance. Something which is really nice and which is not surprising, it's a much more modern and faster laser, that the repeatability, so if you take your three measurements with both devices and you see how, how close they are together, it doesn't tell you about the accuracy, but it does you tell you about something about the accuracy of the machine, um, that it is three, three times better uh, in, a, in a small range already, but even that, it would be a shame if, if we would, would put in a lot of effort and years of um, research if you hadn't had something which is more precise than, than the old machine. Same thing for the ACD, anterior chamber depth, um, compared lens star with the eye star, and again, same, same number in repeatability, uh, the accuracy um, probably won't make it clinically relevant, but the repeatability of this device is, is much higher than of the older one, which is not surprising, it's a time domain laser OCT device, here you have a swept source. Same thing if you use the, the lens thickness measurements, um, which surprised me, the repeatability is, is six times higher in, in the eyes than the new device than, than the lens star. Um, can't really tell you why it increased so much, maybe because of, of, the, of the cataracts. We, we've been measuring mostly cataract patients. The, the average age was uh, 70 years of age, and, and maybe it's, it actually goes better through to ca um, the cataract eyes. Uh, something we will have to look into yet. On the other side, on, on central corner thickness, um, again, repeatability is, is, is a little bit better on, on the more modern device, on the new device, but not so, so much as, as you would expect, or as is expected. Then, if you look at keratometries between the two devices, um, again, repeatability about uh, the same. It's, it's a true keratometry with, with LEDs, um, and, and hence, you, you would expect to have the same measurements. If we compare 
characterometries. And this is a bit of an unfair comparison since it is a true K versus simulated K from, from the Pentacam. So simulated Ks in, in measurement in topographies, anterior topographies, are usually a bit more off than if you use true, true Ks and direct characterometry measurements. And you can see here also in the Bland Altman that the dispersion of, of the measurements are a bit bigger which doesn't tell you which one is the, is the accurate one. It, it could be that the, the Pentacam is the accurate one or the I-star. I would guess that the Pentacam, it takes two seconds to actually measure, scan the, the eye. Um, this is done much, much faster and, and probably with, with the higher repeatability, it, it would, I would err to say this is the, the higher accuracy as well in, in the I-star. Same thing here, if you measure with a Placido, um, device, the, the atlas, then, then you'll see there's the same scatter. It's a bit, little, little bit less than, than actually in the Pentacam, and the repeatability um, is, is much, much higher in, in the I star compared to the atlas. If you look at corneal, uh, posterior corneal curvatures, um, it's, it's actually quite similar between the Pentacam and the I star. Uh, here we make a true comparison because it's not a, an LED true characterometry based measurement, but it's a mean posterior um, sim PK uh, in both devices, and, and you actually get almost the same results, but still a little bit higher of the, the repeatability. So in device testing, retesting is, is higher for the ISTAR than the Pentacam. To conclude, it's, it's a new device, it's, it's really highly accurate, uh, the repeatability is, is absolutely perfect. It, it compares clinically really, really well with, with the gold standards, uh, which, which are out there. What is not surprising, uh, you would expect Swiss precision in, in such a device. But what I really, really like, and I've been discussing with my colleagues already here, is, is that the, the graphic user interface, the practicability, if you put the patient in front of it, you start, you click once, it goes through, you get a result um, which, which you can look at immediately. Um, that's, that's really the nice thing about this machine. So to show you, this is the, the core team. Um, not, not all of them, they at, at Hark Stride Lab, you see all these, these devices here. Um, we've been working together for, for many, many years and my, our two colleagues, the study nurses, while we're talking, are still measuring patients at this moment. No, not Saturday, but yesterday and, and the week after. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>